Hong Kong Cyclothon 2023, start of the 2024 road season for UCI points, so pretty big. It's a 1.1, but it's basically a town centre crit, but in Hong Kong. It's decent. There are some good teams here, like Jayco. Then there's like some classic Conti teams, like Euro Trips and Xpeed will go anywhere. Uh, and then there's like Coratec, and that's kind of it. Rujai, a good Asian continental team to work there from Thailand. And Taran Ganu are decent as well. Those kind of main teams to watch out. But Jayco, obviously, they're here point harvesting, which is fair enough. And they just decide to go nuclear from the off. So you can see it's like there's one main climb on this, which is this bit here. There's also some like uh, subway underpass things where they kind of go up and down. But you can see here it's absolutely thermo from the start. Um, it never looks as steep the motorway passes when you watch it from the, from the front. But you can see everyone's getting amongst it early doors. Um, but yeah, like it's a pretty interesting race to see how people take it. Form's always questionable. Aussies just should always be good. So ARA um, skip caps are the other people who are good. Um, they are Aussie quantity, but like pretty, pretty strong as you'd expect because uh, Australian guys good cycling, especially quantity level compared to others. So anyway, three minutes in, you can see we're going around this hairpin. There's already splits. There's like this group of six off the front. This is the most technical section. The, the filming is absolutely banana. So I apologize in advance for missing some key parts. But you can see people at the back are just about to get shelled. Um, you, know, you know, it's a long fly from Europe to get shelled in seven minutes, but some people do. Uh, and anyway, this bit here is a little chicane. This was quick and fast, actually, and looked pretty tough because people were, um, big gaps were opening. You can see here people not cornering outrageously well. Um, and then if you do that, you've got quite a lot to make up for it. So, yeah, pretty tough. Um, and you can see a gaps here, Red, already. Uh, Red, who is a bit of a legend, he actually had a really good result. But you can see in the Grenadian National Champs kit, he already at the front. And that was the thing. It was all just to do with positioning. You've got to stay at the front. You can see around this corner again, um, XB boy on the front, whacking it out the corners and the gaps opening here. That does end up getting closed, but again, you can see around these corners, the further back you are, you just lose so much speed. And if you do this the whole time, then, uh, you know, you're not going to get dropped. But to be fair, not many people finish this race because it was a short circuit. Um, and a lot of people end up getting lapped, but you can see these guys getting tailed off already. Ciao, ciao. Thanks for coming. Once you're at the back, it just gets worse and worse. And there's just no coming back. But again, it looks like it's slowing down. Jayco go, no, we're on the attack again. You can see out this underpass. Again, going towards the finish line, they attack. We skip forward a little bit because this group actually does get brought back together on the climb. Um, it kind of makes sense because people are always happy to burn energy to bridge across on the climb because it kind of hurts you almost as much as it hurts other people. Um, but again, more aggressive riding from ARA and Ruja. Ruja and the white kit with the orange helmet. Um, and yeah, they've got a pretty good sprinter, Lucas Carston, but I don't. But he didn't really feature too well, so they were probably trying to ride for him. But you can see here, it's real strung out. It looks pretty grim to be fair. Um, but then it's a fast descent um, into this one of the subways. Here's one of the XP boys spat seven minutes in. So you can see it was um, it was tough for the people. Um, there's uh, Alex, who is a Lao national champ. He's a very strong rider, uh, lives in Chiang Mai, I think. Anyway, a lot of these people are actually yeah, good, but probably not suited to it. He's a pretty small climber, so more suited for hilly race. You can see Jayco go chow chow here attacking again. You can see it's really strung out quite a lot. Um, and gaps are just happening because it's just bananas. I looked at Red's file. He averaged 400 watts for the first five minutes. So that is pretty tough. 13 minutes in, and you can see there's more kind of gaps here. Jayco look like they're trying to get this to go a bit. Um, but this is actually really where it goes. You won't see it. So this is the camera footage. But out of this junction, they just go absolutely thermo. You're about to see Jayco go on the front. Um, and it's really hard to tell exactly how all these gaps happen because... The footage is here, but you can see we're kind of seeing here. You're like, okay, I can see from the helicopter there are some gaps, um, but we've then are going to skip to the front, and wow, oh wow, is that carnage being applied? Um, and it's kind of just like continuous chaos of like making it so hard out the corners that everyone's fried and they can't move up. Um, so yeah, it, it's like I wouldn't say it's uh, it's kind of predictable how how it's going to go. Um, in the end, there was always going to be a break, and here we go. We skip to the front. Jayco going chow chow. You can see the guys at the back, like they're just on a different planet to these lot um, in terms of like effort level and the huge gap. Look behind you, there's some XP boys trying to get across, but they just don't actually end up managing to do it um, because Jayco goes thermo. Then on this downhill, they just keep going. And this is the thing, it's like when you've got world tour numbers, you can just crack a huge effort here and just split the whole bunch into like two, basically. Um, going into this corner um, is a real technical, I mean, it's, a, it's obviously a hairpin, but... You come in with big speed, exit that, then there's a chicane, and that really was which sealed the deal for this break. Um, and yeah, you can see here, this is the clowns behind. So anyway, 
that this is it right done thanks for coming uh that was the break so 17 laps in you can see jaco decide it's time to do they basically just minced around for the rest of the race uh well not minced but it was just like through and off nothing crazy and going into this corner jaco decide right you know we've only got seven laps left let's cause some carnage so they attack into this hairpin and you can see some of the guys at the back an x-speed guy and two coratex really struggle around this corner um and going into the next one and start to get gapped off and that's really where it's the, the beginning of the end of the cooperation in the break as soon as you get someone doing what um jaco were doing there you decide not to they had um rudy porter who was a pretty strong climber blake quick who's quick sprinter um and lucas Possleberger there as well and one other i can't remember the name uh, so again, you can see out this corner, look, look at all the gaps uh, being created from this. Um, and yeah, these Coratech boy, boys, chow chow, thanks for coming. They're not getting back on, unfortunately. Same with this X-Speed boy. So yeah, it's not um, it's not ideal in terms of the brake cooperation, but I think it's good tactics from Jayco uh, because they don't want to rely on a sprint. It's just easier if you just like, if you know you're strong on them, you might as well just uh, commit to one twoing people and exposing them and anyway here ARA decide to go on the attack on the right hand side of the road again not a bad idea they're the other team there are quite a lot of teams with a couple people Rujai had two ARA had two Coratech had three uh, X-Speed had two as well but at the end of the day Michigan's four is just better than everyone else's so it doesn't really matter you can see Possleberger I'm pretty sure this is follows him here we then skip to the finish line Possleberger just attacks across all the, the bike exchange people, those guys in the background got lapped. All the um, bike exchange people are just like, or Jayco, whatever they're called, are just like, uh, yeah, no, that is it. And they and everyone's looking. And the thing with that guy, like, I know he's cooked. This is the thing. It's like, it's so easy to say. Why didn't the Rujak guy just close it? It was like, obviously absolutely fried. Um, but yeah, this was really the big gap. And you can see on the climb, he just powers away. And it's almost like everyone knows that's it because you're just not going to bring him back unless you can attack across. Um, and so then it's, it's really difficult to actually convince anyone that it's a good idea to work because you're just like we're gonna work get it close and then someone will attack and also in this situation if you've got two people it's like are you really gonna think i'll sacrifice myself 100 percent, and this person's gonna get a result no you just get one two by jaco so in your head it's real hard to do this and you can see here like people are trying to do stuff um there's red uh, looking strong to be fair and that's kind of it um everyone else is just like cooked and then you can see ira attacking i don't know why ruja guy followed his own teammate but he did that got shut down by jaco and then chow chow thanks for coming that's basically the end so we skip forward because uh nothing happened well two people attacked ara and jaco attacked but it was kind of just like no they rolled in they were never actually gonna catch possible burger at any point um so yeah got a big win got like a whatever is 150 uci points or something um, a fair few, maybe 100 UCI points for a win, uh, for a UCI win, so decent for Jayco, probably worth the trip, yes, um, and then here is Kane Richardson for ARA, battering, uh, I think it was Rudy Porter in the sprint, so yeah, uh, sorry, Stiebart in the sprint, and then Blake Quick takes up the following result, um, with a sprint with Red coming in sixth, which is pretty outrageous, to be fair, um, for a big result from the man, Sixth and a 1.1. I know it's in, you know, I know it is a whatever. Not the biggest thing, but he let out early on. Got rolled in the end. Bit oily, but, you know, it's not bad. Polycoin has been the Olympics. So, anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you didn't enjoy this video. I'm going crazy with no cycling still. So, this is probably going to be the last one for a while. Because now it's just cyclocross and I can't act that.